In this video, we look at the factors affecting the performance of the CPU, and we pay particular attention to clock speed, the number of cores, and cache. Let's think about a typical racing car as an analogy before we look at the central processing unit itself. So what are all the factors affecting the speed of this car? Well, obviously, we have the horsepower of the engine itself, but that's not the only factor. In the same way with a CPU, you've got how fast the clock can tick measured in hertz, but there are many other factors which affect how fast it can perform. So what else have we got? Well, we've got the tyres. These will have a big overall impact on the speed of our racing car. We've got the weather conditions. We've got the driver's overall skill. We've got the aerodynamics of the racing car. As you can see, there are lots of factors which determine the overall speed of a racing car in any particular race. In a similar way, the performance of the CPU is affected by various factors. There are three critical aspects of a CPU design which you need to be aware of for your exam. The first is clock speed. Measured in hertz, this is the number of instruction cycles per second it can execute. We think of modern CPUs as operating in multiple gigahertz, with a single gigahertz representing one billion operations per second. The whole cycle is controlled by the control unit and the CPU's internal clock. The faster the clock ticks, the quicker you can fetch and execute instructions. You can't strictly say it's one to one. For example, you can't say that with a three gigahertz processor, there are three billion cycles. Therefore, there are three billion instructions being executed per second, but it isn't far off. And if you stop to think about that for a moment, that's really, really quite incredible, the speed at which modern CPUs are now able to operate. The second factor to consider is the size of the cache. The cache is a temporary storage of instructions and data which are being read from and written to the main memory. So every time you fetch an instruction or a piece of data, we keep a copy of it in the cache. Every time we write data back out to the memory, we're going to keep a copy of it in the cache. The purpose of this is that we want to try and avoid getting instructions and data from memory as much as possible, as it costs time. So if we have the instructions and data we need inside the process already in the cache, we can save lots of time. This clearly means the more instructions and data we can store in the local cache, the better, and the more efficient the CPU is going to be. Now there's a tipping point where you might ask, well, what's the point in having main memory at all? We might as well have all the contents of memory already inside the cache inside the CPU. Well, the size of the cache inside the CPU is limited and tends to be much smaller than the storage available in main memory. And we actually only need a relatively small amount of cache in order to notice a significant increase in the CPU's overall performance. The final fact to consider is CPU cores. Now a core is in very simplistic terms, a complete copy of a CPU. So for example, a quad core processor would have four separate processing units and each would have its own copy of registers, ALU, accumulator, etc. Therefore, a CPU that has multiple cores actually has the power to run multiple programs at the same time. CPU cores have to communicate with each other. The more cores you have, the more communication needs to take place to keep everything in sync, and this costs time and efficiency. On top of this, many programs are simply not designed to make maximum use out of multiple cores. So here's a summary of everything we've covered in this video. Pause it and take some notes. So that's everything you need to know for the exam. But if you'd like to go a little bit further and prepare yourself possibly for the next level of study, we've got about another minute or two of extra information that goes beyond the spec. Many people look at a physical single chip like this plugged into their motherboard and call this a CPU. And while that understanding is perfectly fine for exams, if it contains more than one core, this is actually technically incorrect. 
So here we have what is actually a chip multiprocessor and it's containing four CPU cores and some shared cache. Now we commonly just refer to this as a quad core processor, but actually this is multiple CPU cores embedded into a single physical chip, which is known as a chip multiprocessor. The efficiency of the computer's main CPU can be further enhanced by offloading some of its tasks to other more specialized processors. Most modern computers, especially PCs dedicated to gaming and gaming consoles, will have separate graphics cards and sound cards, and these will have their own processors. Highly specialized forms of your computer's main CPU, which are designed to excel at processing instructions related to graphics and sound. By offloading these tasks to these processors, the overall performance of your main CPU can be improved significantly. Thank you.